welcome to Ukraine Update here on the Shills, everybody. And there's all kinds of stuff going off over Starsky's way right now. Everybody seems to be quite busy indeed. So why don't we hand it right over to him and get the headlines. Oh, wrong button. <laughs> but it works. It works perfect. <laughs> It, it works uh, perfectly. Uh, why hasn't it me. gone away? Um, hello. Why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jeez. What the fuck was that? Anyway, Starsky, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. Uh, yeah. So, uh, this week and all this month, all the past month, we've had a lot of missile strikes almost every night i think that we only uh, had uh, three nights including the, the the night yesterday without strikes uh, but not in kiev there were uh, strikes in other areas of ukraine uh, tonight for example even though uh, it was quiet in kiev but in um, ov- across ukraine 15 missiles were intercepted and uh, almost 30 russian drones including shahed drones um and uh one of the uh, biggest uh, i would say and uh, most horrible tragedies that uh, happened several days ago was when a mother and a child during the uh, air alert went to the shelter in ukraine um went to the shelter in ukraine and uh, uh, to the shelter in uh, kiev and uh, the shelter was closed because security uh, hesitated to open it and uh, and uh, the debris fell down killing mother her child and another woman and uh, today uh, this security also his uh, chief the chief of this uh, hospital where this shelter was located also uh, several other responsible men they were uh, tried and uh, they and they were basically uh, uh, detained in prison hopefully they will receive a lot of years and they will like personally i wish that they all had posters of this child and those dead women uh, attached to their walls 24 7 so they could think on what happened uh also we just received information that uh, six uh, tu-95 russian bombers mm-hmm. took off uh and obviously tonight we will have another strike maybe it will be uh supported by ballistic missile strike and maybe shaky drones i believe so because yesterday it was quiet so probably the uh, the russians were concentrating uh their missiles all this time and uh interesting news we are receiving from belgorod uh, shabekina also kursk also bransk we can see that five russian oblasts are on fire all this week uh something explodes there was a strike it was not confirmed yet but uh there there, there was information that there was a strike uh in kursk city the russian military air base was hit and uh, we were reported that several su-34 bombers as well as anti-air complex panzer were uh, damaged or destroyed um so basically five oblasts it's like in ukraine we have zaporizhia kherson dnipro luhansk and donetsk and uh, same with same in russia they have five oblasts where uh, they face not like you know not, not like something that we are facing here in ukraine but something very similar uh the battle in shebekina belgorod oblast in russia continues for three days already russians uh, brought uh, spetsnaz to deal with the russian freedom fighters uh, that uh, continue uh, attempting to take control over shebekina and 
continue their raid towards Belgorod. Uh, we also know that uh, Wagner obviously may be sent to uh, Shabekina as well as Kadyrovites because uh, somebody needs to make TikToks about it. So it's it's everything on my side. All right, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, there's um that 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 story that hit about the mother and child and the other woman that hit hard. People were um, yeah, that was that that brought things home pretty big. Um, there um there's a shout out here I want to do. Um, Robin Miller had donated twenty dollars uh, for the Boom Boom Fund. NAFO stands with Ukraine. Burn, Putler, burn. <laughs> Lots of love to the Ukrainian people and to Operator Starsky. How is Fluffy, a.k.a. Chicken Nugget? <laughs> well, here we go. She's here. Uh, her, her rear part, at least. Uh, so she's fine. She's very, very active. Uh, she scratches like a freaking monster and meows sometimes and harasses everybody in the house uh so so she's okay uh her eyes are getting better almost fine because her sight is 100 percent. i mean ouch and <laughs> uh and uh she's very active because she started eating like a little elephant and uh she's holy shit. Uh, she is, she <laughs> steals meat from me, even though she's like one and a half months old. But this is what she does. Uh, yeah, so everything will be fine if I survive. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, she's definitely cute. Look yeah, at that. She, she, she wants to play because when I put her down, she starts screaming even louder. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of uh, shout outs here we can do. Um, WL had thrown $50 super chat into the pile there. Thank you very much for that. Slavo Ukraini could be Slava, I think, but Slavo, you know, Salvo, it kind of works as well, like kick some ass, you know, and, uh, so thank you very much for that. And then White Lightning threw $5 Super Chat in, White Lightning 777 to be precise. Ask Starsky, how do you say, and then it got worse in Ukrainian? Is it the same as in Russian? And then it got worse in Ukrainian. Potem stalo hirsha. I, I'm just Something looking like at that. the closed captioning. Put installation. <laughs> it, it just fucked that right up. Oh, that's funny. Um, should we go to Claire and get a few things in that have been found this week by Allie and Claire herself there? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dick. I, I want to go back to uh, the first thing that uh, Starsky was talking about, and that was uh, uh, some confusion I'm seeing back and forth in regards to the women who went to the shelter and the shelter was locked. Is it uh, one of the questions that came through a lot is, is it normal for the shelters to be locked uh, on and off instead of being like here that, you know, perhaps open? They actually have to open them at certain times when they think that there's more of a threat. Uh, so usually as soon as there's an air alert, uh, those shelters are opened by responsible mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And uh, there must be responsible people again, because uh, in the shelters, uh, there are a lot of things like water, uh, mad kits and stuff like that. And uh, we just don't want those things to disappear. You know, when those shelters are open 24 seven, uh, it means that somebody has to be inside and control everything uh, mm -hmm. because you know people are different unfortunately uh, that's why those shelters uh, were closed at least they were closed uh, mm -hmm. until there's air alert and somebody has to open them for the people uh, sometimes there are like six or ten air alerts per day it means that this person, the responsible person, must uh, open and close uh, must open and close the shelter ten times in a row, uh, and, and they have to do it. 
And uh, after this case, when the security refused to open shelter, uh, our mayor uh, ordered for those shelters to be open 24-7. Mm -hmm. So probably, like, it's very easy to just assign a guard that will be spending all his time just guarding the shelter. I, I mean, it's normal. Mm -hmm. it's nothing, I don't know, nothing complicated. Right. In the army, we would do that, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's what uh, they will do. It, it's admirable how quickly they made the changes right away. I mean, they've already actually put out for the people that people were charged with doing something wrong and that there was some accountability for it. And then also they're changing the policy. I mean, that happened like really quick. That's encouraging. So it doesn't continue to well, put anything, you know, in danger. Yeah, because like this is our first war. We are learning. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to learn uh, due to such tragic cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no. It, it, the response was was quite quick. Uh, the other really big one is uh, back to uh, the nuclear plant and the expansions that were going on there. It's in the news again, back and forth about the risks that are going on there, which brought it to light because of the recent, uh, as you said, the recent firings in Russia, inside Russia, that are happening. Um, I did read re that Russia's response was to fire everybody involved in that plant instead of trying to figure out yeah. how it happened. They just fired like, they just fired everybody who worked there. They got rid of everybody. Um, a, a much different response, I, I think. It, it kind of struck to me is that, uh, yes, something tragic happened, but the response on the Ukrainian side was very humanitarian, looked for accountability. Uh, it, the majority of the people felt reassured by the resp response that Ukraine had in, in regards to a terrible situation and try to make it better. And yet I read this article over there about what happened in Russia, uh, another, you know, a, a tragic for the people that were involved in the loss, you know, I know they're Russians, so st still lost, but their response was to make it harder for everybody in the area, their own people. All of yeah. them fired, all of them out of work, everybody under like almost a terroristic threat that they might be responsible for this. It was it it just struck me as, you know, so such a different way to look at it. And it really it really hits home to me that we are definitely on the right side of something that they're, they're totally coming at everything from wrong, of course. But even with their own people, it's just phenomenal it, it it just blows my mind every every single time but i know you're used to it stars could you say oh bear what do you expect they're russians like i get that i get that but the, the lack of humanity it always takes my breath away uh even for their own people it just it, um, recently we also offered uh civilians in belgrade who want to escape mm -hmm. uh from dangerous areas uh the the ukrainian representatives offered them a refuge on the mm -hmm. ukrainian territory so we will take care of them we are talking mm -hmm. about the uh humanitarian corridor like the one that uh, russians didn't let us create you mm -hmm. know to uh evacuate our civilians uh so we are offering russians to uh use such um evacuation mm -hmm. corridors do you see a lot of movement currently? Are they not? Do you see a lot of them leaving? Uh, not yet, not yet. It it was just uh, announced. Okay. It, oh, and what is the stance about Wagner actually saying they're not going to wait for Russia to call them in? They're there now, like they're going in anyway. They're going to do whatever. I just saw. I just read an article where the head guy uh, was he said Piraz, He's he's just saying we're not going. We're not going to wait for anything. We just want Russia to send us some ammunition. We're going to do what we need to do over there and protect everyone who lives in that area. Um, uh, yeah, I want to see them being sent there together with Kadyrovites because we know that they had a small dispute. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully this dispute will be resolved with uh, firearms and IEDs. Personally, I would like to see <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks. thanks. <laughs> yeah. I got a I got a member message from Godless Scummer, member for 35 months. Nice. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, victory to Ukraine. Couldn't agree more. And on that note, I want to send it right over to Nick Suter here, who's got a 
very interesting thing to be talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, indeed. And in fact, I'm unfortunately going to have to leave uh, in just a few minutes. But uh, two things. First of all, it was interesting about Wagner. And I, at some point, I'd love to hear uh, the commander's uh, take on this. But they were complaining that the roads behind them were mined by the Russians, presumably to prevent them from leaving, or if they tried to leave, to wipe out uh, all of Wagner. So I'm, I'm curious. Now, there's some indication that that was done, but not for them, I don't know, but I'm sure um, uh, Commander McMillan has an idea. But before that, I did want to get to, as of eight hours ago, uh, Reuters is reporting that Zelensky has come out and said that the counteroffensive is ready. They're good to go. So I uh, imagine that's uh, pretty big. And I'm uh, curious, Starsky, I assume you've, you've heard that. And um, how are you feeling now that uh, presumably it's going to start at any any time? Uh, yeah, we were looking forward to see the. Oh my God, what what's wrong? With me? <laughs> uh, I, I blame Dick, but you know, we, we I blame Dick be... when stuff goes wrong on my show. To be fair, <laughs> bald, bald green man attacking. Uh, yeah, so uh, we all expect the counteroffensive to start anytime soon. The sooner the better, because everyone is so freaking tired of Russians. I talked to uh, to my guys at the training camp. Uh, and I think it was in, in one of my videos that uh, I asked them what they what would they like to say to Russian terrorists, and uh, everybody is like, we don't want to talk to them, we want to kill them. Yeah, yeah, just want to have target practice until they're gone. Well, I think I think <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and I think it's it's difficult to be sitting here and talking about what's happening in Bakhmut and what's happening uh, as Ukrainians are, are really just sort of hanging on and waiting until they can actually really do something. And now that time has come, it's sort of, um, it's, uh, for me, it's just, go fucking get them. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm it, it's, um, yeah, I, I can't imagine anybody's uh, more, uh, impatient to see this happen than Ukrainians, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. We will see uh, Russians running away a lot. Uh, we will see uh, them trying to escape together with their commanders, colonels, and uh, uh, the, the the like. Something that we saw in, for example, in Kharkiv, I believe, area of Liman, Izium, uh, Kherson. I think that we will be seeing a lot of pictures like that. Yeah, I mean, the the intercepts of phone calls and such that have been coming out make it pretty clear that the morale of the Russian army is sunk very low. And I think it's only going to take a, a swift kick in the nuts to rout them. Well, and they've been they've been terrified. Is, has been my understanding oh, yeah. from yeah. this. I mean, they they know it's coming. It's like everybody knows it's coming. And usually, you'd expect Zelensky and everyone else to be kind of. Uh, they've been coy about it, but not as much as you'd think. They're sort of like, yeah, we we everybody knows it's coming. And the response on the Russian side has been, oh shit, it really is coming. And it's like, I I don't know what they expect, but um, it, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's it, it, I mean, it, terrified is what what I'm hearing. Is, you know about what they're saying and doing is they're just like yeah. holy shit the ukrainians are coming and it's like yeah yeah it's yeah, not it's going to be a happy couple of months if you're russian right now yeah. uh also russians uh, are uh, offering uh, their citizens uh, like short contracts like three months six months on the front lines because uh, th they decided instead of uh, having another mobilization, uh, they would just offer smaller, like shorter contracts. Oh, wow. it's, good. it's a bit more honest if you think about it. I mean, it's just sort of like, here's a six day contract. Don't worry. It's all you'll need. Um... <laughs> yeah. The, the <laughs> other part of that equation is, are they actually going to get paid? Because there are a lot of complaints about, you know, who pays hey, a dead man? Well, it's not just dead man. It's it's once you're at the front, you no longer have any way to influence things. And apparently a lot of them just the pay is not going to their families once they get uh, deployed. Why am I not surprised? Yeah, exactly. 
Well, it turns out that was that was that was. I mean, we. I remember when this started, we were talking about the mobile incinerators, and we haven't heard a lot about them. But it turns out that's actually one of the reasons they've been using them is because if they incinerate the bodies, there's no evidence that the person's dead, so you don't have to pay out for that. You can just say MIA. Um, wow. Yeah. There's a level of callousness that is just mind-boggling in the way they work. Well, and you're I mean, people are surprised they've got morale problems. If you're going into war and there's a <laughs> mobile incinerator right behind you, it's like, no, no, this is for the bad guys. Don't worry, dude. <laughs> <It's just>, yeah. <laughs> don't don't worry about the Ivanovich over there who we just tossed in. You know, it's you know. <laughs> Ivanovich is having a tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a tanning salon, yeah. not a mobile incinerator. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We've got a super chat in. Uh Yvonne Way threw five bucks into the hat. It's a super sticker with the little dude and his little buddy marching doing the trombone thing. And the legs look like they're goose stepping a bit. So there could be an in joke in there somewhere. I'm just saying. <laughs> but it's a good one. <laughs> Oh, that was cool. Thanks, thanks. Uh, why don't we turn it over to Dave here and get some viewer questions in and see where we're at. The biggest reason why Russia is losing this war is because they're targeting civilians in Ukraine. Uh, I think everybody will agree with me. Uh, the, uh, first of all, there is no military goal in targeting civilians other than, I don't know, you want to kill them because you hate them, you know. Uh, and uh, another thing is uh, Russian civilians in Russia don't decide anything. There is one Tsar that uses them as cannon fodder and uh, source of income that's all that's why targeting civilians makes absolutely no sense we don't have uh, so many uh, measures to you know kill russian civilians even if we wanted to do this uh, so uh, that's why ukraine was always more efficient than uh, russian troops that's why while russians were spraying uh, civilian cars and buildings with uh, shells and bullets we were striking uh, their uh, command centers we were disrupting their logistics and uh, destroying their anti-air defenses that's why we are more efficient and that's what we will do cool um, I, we, something went wrong, Dave, nobody could hear you ask that question. So I think we've got it fixed, Dave, just say hello to everybody and make sure the viewers can hear you now. Yeah. Better without me. I don't know. Please there. Uh, keep your opinions to yourself on that question. Is he... Claire. Um, <laughs> Give it, give it a, give it a couple seconds and see if he's up now. Um, yay! People are saying, "Yeah, you're in, you're in." I don't. Oh yeah. I had, yeah, I had to refresh the link into OBS. I don't know why, but it just dropped your audio. So okay, we're good now. Dave can be heard. Uh, well, Claire might disagree, but you know, um, I, I got a. I, I don't now. Don't say that. <laughs> I like so, uh, DMs. I do have a couple uh, of shout outs. I do have a couple <laughs> shout outs and then we'll go back to questions here. So um, Mary Tyson has sent in a hundred dollars for the boom, boom fund direct donation. Big shout out there, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if I turn over to here, level 70 donated uh, $15 rounded through super chat. Hey, Starsky, do you think this counter offensive will expel the Russians from all occupied territories? Some military analysts think it won't be enough. Another one will be needed. Uh, could be, because even uh, President Zelensky said that he cannot predict everything. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, the chicken nugget is running around and probing <laughs> everything with her claws, you know, uh, in including my legs. Uh, <laughs> 
but we will do everything we can uh, because we understand that uh, we have to uh, remove Russians from all of the territories and restore the internationally recognized borders. Yes. Yeah, not their made-up bullshit, but the real ones. Absolutely. Yeah, I have to agree. I don't see the offensive as clearing all the Russians out of all of Ukraine. Uh, it, it's it'll a lot of those gain... fuckers. Well, you yeah, know? but it, 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 you have to think of it as incremental. This offensive will set up the conditions to launch the next offensive, which sets up the next and next and next, so on down the road. Um, not to criticize, but the Ukrainian military simply isn't big enough for one giant decisive push everywhere. So it's going to have to be small gains that are carefully orchestrated. And I, I don't doubt for a moment the Ukrainian general staff, who are very smart so far, uh, have mapped out a longer course of action of how they're going to proceed. Yeah, a lot of sense in that. A lot of sense for sure. Um, let me just make sure we're still caught up here and we'll uh, get back to Dave for a little bit more from the viewers. Yeah, I'm good. Go for it, Dave. Sweet. Um, there is one here for both Starsky and Commander McMillan. Uh, I read that the U.S. will support Ukraine having a modern military. This sounds great, but is there any? are there any drawbacks? Uh, is this a formal partnership? Thank you, Shana. Oh. oh, that's cute. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to interrupt the cat. My so. heart. Uh... <laughs> the, the idea that they're going to have to do it as a long-term thing, yeah, I think that's that's pretty important to understand. I think that we're giving them the equipment so that not only can they expel the Russians, so that at the end, and we already know there's been a lot of serious talk about bringing Ukraine into NATO. Uh, we need to make sure that they are ready for entry into NATO because there are preconditions that you have to meet. And it's not just the whole, oh, you can't go to be in the middle of a war. There are other things there. Uh, restrictions on how your military is organized, the way it operates. You have to meet NATO training standards, equipment standards, etc. So I think all of that kind of falls follows suit with what you're talking about. Where are we here? Um, long long pause. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if, uh, but I think Dave could bring a couple more in and then we'll go over to Claire for a couple of other points of interest that we wanted to get to. Oh, we also have to do the, um, we'll be telling you about Janine's whole mission to Ukraine here in a couple of minutes as well, because we got to make sure we Absolutely. get the shout outs in. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So Driving and Luton was asking, uh, what is Operator Starsky's opinion? about the changing narrative on Russian TV being far more critical of the war and how is it run, but also possible regime change? I don't think so. I don't think that it's possible to change the regime uh, until Putin is alive. Uh, and uh, Fluffy agrees with me. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, we can see more and more people uh, like, what What was the name of this? Jesus, uh, just a second, uh, be because it was so, so cool. Uh, yeah, uh, Zatulin. Uh, Zatulin, uh, it's a member of Russian parliament and he's a representative of the Putin's party, Yedina Rossiya. Uh, the ruling party, um, probably the only active party in Russia, uh, despite others, you know. But uh, uh, recently he participated in uh, a conference and uh, he literally said that, yes, we didn't reach any of the goals that we had last year, which was denazification, demilitarization, uh, and uh, neutrality of Ukraine. Uh, he said, 
obviously because they still don't control any of the major cities in Ukraine as well. And uh, he said that uh, Ukraine will not be neutral, of course. After all the shit we've done to Ukrainians, they will never be neutral anymore and they will they will always hate us. And uh, if, uh, like, whether R Ukraine remains Ukraine being ruled by President Zelensky, yes, it will. Uh, because we did a big big mistake and uh, all kinds of uh, peaceniks out there that uh, still you know uh, have those illusions about big strong russia uh, mighty power and shit like that uh, no they're losing and they are already they have clear understanding that they're losing um so yeah we will hear more and more of that uh Girkan and uh, uh, Prigozhin, they are out of the Russian club. They are still Russians, but they are out of the club. They don't follow the same agenda, same narratives that uh, the other Russian officials. But we see that more and more Russian officials stop following this uh, agenda. So I think we will, we will see more of that. It doesn't mean that the regime will change, but it's a good sign. It's one of the signs that uh, it's possible. It it, it yeah. can possibly happen in the future. Yeah, I think what you're you're seeing is they're trying to lay the groundwork and sound out the public about potentially saying, "Okay, we failed. We're calling this off." It's opening the door potentially for real negotiations. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you because know, it's really hard in that kind of a regime when you've been spewing all this hate mongering for the past year, year and a half, to suddenly reverse course and say, "Oh no, we're 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 calling it off." All the people that died, all mm -hmm. the you know suffering of the economy because of the sanctions, ah, that doesn't matter anymore. We're just going to call it off. So they have to find a way to make it palatable without causing disruption. And a lot of, I think, the pressure that's hitting right now that you're seeing this starting right now is because of these Russian partisan incursions into Russia. And that, from many accounts of people who are in Russia who talk about it, say it has really scared the bejesus out of the folks in the Kremlin. I agree on that because they cannot lie forever that every, everything goes according to plan. Sooner or later, they will have to just sit down and decide what to do next. And that's uh, that's first signs that uh, they're trying to do that is what we see on the television when Russian authorities start yep. admitting that uh, they made a big, big mistake. Yeah, yeah. The, what we're seeing on those TV shows that's entirely scripted beforehand those are not like our you know saturday and sunday morning mm -hmm. uh, panel shows that these are well, definitely part of the propaganda machine pushing an agenda and on that point right there that brings to mind question i've had for like a couple of weeks here i've been noticing a, a much larger push in actually speaking to the russian people like uh, we, we're starting to realize that this might not be like such a good thing in trying to get a bigger backing on another force within inside the kremlin moving forward and taking over and making decisions that might be more for in line with the country's best interest moving forward with the rest of the world I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous because I realized that normal Russian transactions could care less about anybody else in the rest of the world. But I'm really starting to see a softer note in some of the propaganda speaking to their own people because there are many uprisings right now inside Russia against yeah. this war. And, and they're getting attacked everywhere. Um, yeah, I think you have to realize that that message isn't, well, Putin's on his way out. That message is scripted by Putin to kind of say, well, the glorious yeah. leader has realized that the suffering of his beloved people is too much and he's going to call off what 
was a great idea, but wasn't realized uh-huh. because of his opponents and that kind of stuff. Oh, and, and pick like five or six or 10 or 20 or 100 uh, oh, top yeah. officials to go down instead of him. Oh, like yeah. blame it all on them and their advice uh, and uh, just clean house. I mean, that, that was my question in, that you answered. And I was going to ask Starsky too, what he sees, like how he's going to actually try to twist this to be a good thing for him as he backs away and runs out of Ukraine. Because like, that's <laughs> basically what I see the groundwork being laid for. Well, um, remember they the just Russians, left. Yeah, the Russians yeah. are known for being great gymnasts. So he's basically going to ca- crawl up his own asshole and come back out and say, "Oh, it wasn't my fault. It was these guys' fault." Yeah, but I mean, just the way it looks when there's a missile strike and like all, all the yeah. ships that are supposed to fight back on it on a supposed uh, Russian takeover area of Ukraine, and they go and they do a missile missile strikes out there, and, and, the, and the fleet just leaves, okay? Because they're <laughs> saying they have these territories, but they're not actually occupying or controlling these territories. They make like a big hit, make a big statement. They're surrounding everything. Ukraine comes back in, does a little push, and I didn't even think that that was a huge missile strike, Starsky, was it? And they just took tail and all left. They, that speaks volumes. You see, the resources are really, really uh, desperate, you know, or there's just not a real push for actively going in there and controlling the situation. And uh, by the way, this missile strike uh, was conducted using uh, Storm Shadow missiles. Mm-hmm. Uh, generously provided to us by our British allies, uh, and those are very, very good. I know that uh, uh, mm-hmm. they made them, uh, they made it possible to attach them to uh, Su twenty four uh, Ukrainian bombers that we still have. Uh, and uh, I must say that the f- the the biggest fun for Russians will only start after the uh, successful Ukrainian counteroffensive because mm-hmm. uh, and not only for Russians as for Russians uh, the fun will only begin because uh, after uh, they are completely removed from Ukraine uh, they will have to deal with the uh, uh, Russian freedom fighters they mm-hmm. will have to deal with everyone who is dissatisfied with Putin and uh, i'm talking about not about russian people like nobody cares about russian people i'm mm-hmm. talking about uh, oligarchs i'm talking about people yeah. who had like huge businesses uh, on the west and uh, now they're losing billions of dollars uh, every month because of sanctions and stuff so uh, but uh, of course the 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 most yummy uh, about all this is that uh, they will have to continue fighting against uh, the uh, Russian freedom fighters armed with tanks, armed with helicopters, missiles, again, uh, all kinds of strike drones, mm-hmm. all kinds of artillery that was bought in uh, Walmart. And uh, th- like the fun will continue for a long long time maybe not indefinitely but they will spend like i don't know how much time the war will come to russia uh, on a huge scale uh that's one thing another thing is uh, again it's because currently i have a more or less clear vision on what happens after the counteroffensive. um yeah, and uh, we were already talking about it, uh, that a lot of angry Ukrainian men will finally be able to travel around the globe because we can easily access uh, European Union, uh, probably will become members of European Union. And uh, uh, we will be very, very angry and, uh, you know, uh, we will ask a lot of questions to different people. Because, you know, all the peaceniks, all the supporters of the Russian terrorism, they live in their, uh, let's say, uh, comfortable bubble where they think that calling to kill Ukrainians, it's a uh, freedom of speech. It's their right. 
but to ukrainians it's, it's a matter of survival that's why yeah. we will be very very happy to meet all of those beautiful people and uh, ask uh, those motherfuckers why did they want us to die uh, yeah. I think this will be the most pleasant part of this. I mean, uh, I, I will travel like all around the globe. I'm, I'm already packing my bags. Awesome. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. I got a couple of shout outs I'll do here. So um, the killer rabbit of Carbanog. I love that. Monty Python. Um, Starsky. What do you think of the Russian troll complaining about your kitten posts? He seemed to think it was cheating. I say delete him. Was that in this chat? Russian troll complaining about my kitten? Yeah. Here, I'm sending out the uh, the snail. How could they complain <laughs> about a kitten? Like, a kitten? Yeah, where is it? Really? The Ukrainian kitten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know what kind of hurtless bastard can complain about a kitten. I mean, yeah. really, it like you know, you know, yeah. yeah here, I'll I'll put out the uh, the the troll snail there. Remember oh, your snail oh. theory, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, Lauren had <laughs> gifted. <laughs> oh, God. Lauren had gifted a shills membership. So thank you, Lauren. It's not telling me who got it. Oh yes, it is. It was. No, it's not telling me, stupid thing. And uh, But thanks, Lauren. Thank you very much. And welcome to the family, someone. And then uh, Cats Cats uh, dropped five uh, pounds into the chat fund there. I am lurking with the googly eye thing. Fuck Putin 100%. Hope Fluffy's okay. Good words. Awesome. And I think I'm caught up then. And uh, time is getting a little bit short. It's going to be a shorter mm -hmm. show today. Oh, so... Janine is heading to Ukraine. Here, Guy L got the gifted membership. Awesome. Thanks, Guy, and welcome to the family. Um, and this is I my got... buddy from, uh, uh, Guy L is my buddy from Twitter. Hi, buddy. Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome, okay. Twitter so, buddy. Yeah. We've got, um, we've got uh, Janine's shout out here to do. Exciting news. Janine Treblanche is going to Ukraine. She's going to be making a difference, feeding the troops, volunteering with the Magic Food Army. It's really, really cool stuff. There's a link in the description where you can help donate towards the travel costs. And there is a link being dropped by CF Beauty in the live chat right now. And that stupid bot of ours will do it every now and then, too, if it you know <laughs> even works. Is, does the body even work, work right bot. now? I don't see it posting anything. Sometimes you have to call it into action. Stupid crap. I don't think that uh, showed up for the show today. Yeah. No, see, it's on strike. Piece of crap. Um, I, I don't know what to do about the bot, but we can get the links in because we're not stupid. Um, I think there's it about... Threaten it with a ticket to Russia if it doesn't like, act right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I... Uh... I don't know what the hell the thing's doing. Um, I'll try to fix it in the background, maybe. Oh, I see. Uh, Streamlabs just decided to turn the bot off. We should, we should have a bot now. So, yeah, back to what I was trying to say. Um, Janine's heading to Ukraine. I think there's about, I don't know, 2,800, maybe three grand needed in total here. Uh, and um, the, the Starsky patch is... The highest bidder in this gets the uh, Starsky patch. Is that how it works, Starsky? Uh, yes, it's true. And uh, since we're talking about patch, I remember that I still uh, owe some patches. Uh, you know, to, to I, I still have to send some patches to to people that I promised this winter. Maybe. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, it's uh, I, yeah. I thanks, another... Richie. I need another Starsky to do this uh, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to clone will, Starsky, guys, I, so he has yeah. help. Yeah, guys, I, I, I promise I honestly will send you the patches because I, I promised, but uh, again, I, I I warned you it will take some time. Yeah, yeah, kind of busy over there. No, I, I don't think anybody will be begrudge you. <laughs> well, and here we <laughs> have Miroslav sure. Burtovi in the chat. Uh, my buddy, he's, uh, he's a desi designer here, here in Ukraine. He said that he will help with patches. 
And, oh, cool. Uh, basically, yeah, basically I can use and abuse uh, Miroslav because he's my friend. He cannot say no to me. Uh, I, I know <laughs> some information about him. So, yes, he will help me. Uh, perfect. Welcome, welcome, welcome then. You know, somebody who puts in effort, you got to respect that. We had another super chat come in from our own CF Beauty running the Shills live chat for us. So you all know who she is. Let's get our girl to Ukraine. Come on, Shills family. $20 donation there. So, yes, absolutely. Let's get Janine over to Ukraine. She really wants to get there. They really want her to get there. And so that works out pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> um the link is in the description again. Uh, it'll be dropped in the live chat. Here we go. The goddamn bot will actually do it for us now, too. So that's a thing. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, you know, here. Let's hear it for the bot. Yay! <laughs> so um, before we get too late here, because we are doing a shorter show today, Starsky's got some, uh, you know, well, let's just say he's a bit busy right now. So we don't want to be keeping him up too late or anything. So let's get. A couple last viewer questions in from Dave and see where we end up. Absolutely. Why not? There's one from uh, your friend Guy. Uh, hello to you. Welcome here. Uh, I'm going to just ask you your opinion on, uh, oh, do you think Putin will go quietly once Crimea is lost or will Crimea spur the domino effect with Putin, Lukashenko, Hungary, etc. will fall after Crimea? falls it says falls but i like to think of it as crimea being uh, reclaimed and rising like a phoenix yeah. i really hope so because uh we used to uh underestimate people a lot uh, when we t when we spoke uh, oh my god when when we talk about russians for example yeah we always and i just said it like 15 minutes ago that Rus russians don't decide anything unless they are un armed and angry and hungry then they can do something uh, and uh, same with uh, belarusians by the way because one way or another we saw some massive protests in belarus in belarus several years ago uh, so i don't think that it's possible in russia but uh, as for belarus it's completely possible that uh, there can be some kind of uprising there uh, also, Lukashenko doesn't seem very well uh, these days. A lot of things can happen to Lukashenko. Um, as for the Russian opposition, they're fucking hopeless, guys. They are... So, first of all, they, uh, they were calling us uh, terrorists for this uh, unidentified drone strike on Moscow the other day. Uh, again... Uh, I tried to uh, to find any information on like injured dead. I tried to find information uh, on how many drones actually exploded. It appeared that uh, those drones either had no detonators or no explosive charge whatsoever installed. Uh, so I, I believe it was a false flag or Annie Lorak again because uh, you know she's a singer. She probably doesn't know how those uh drones work maybe she uh, uh, fucked up something uh but the other day i saw this uh video uh you know so like russian opposition uh sitting somewhere in europe uh having political shelter of course having all kinds of benefits and playing intellectuals like intellectual intellectual people uh, they are uh, invited to the shows, to the studios a lot, where they say a lot of useless bullshit. And uh, there was this show. Uh, I, I don't really remember the name of the guy, but he was like, Putin is a very uh, tactical man. He's a very, very tactical man. Uh, and uh, that's why we have to uh, continuously uh, repeat free the uh, oh my god what's the, uh, free navalny free navalny we have to continuously repeat and tell him to free navalny and when the tactical situation will benefit putin he will free navalny i'm like 
What the fuck are you talking about? Oh my god. Uh so uh Ru guys, Russian opposition is fucking hopeless. Just forget about it. Like they don't exist. Uh, Russians in Russia decide more than opposition uh, outside of Russia. But as for Belarus, it can absolutely happen, I believe. Mm. Um, also, we of... have, also, we have uh, Belarusian freedom fighters in Ukraine as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like... Uh... Yeah. A uh, couple of super chats how... here. Oh, Sorry. go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, I just think it's interesting how Navalny has become this... You know, the, the, the icon everybody holds up is, oh, he will es establish true democracy in Russia. And you look at the guy's history, and I think it's pretty clear it, that is not his objective. It, he's, he's, he's just another oligarch who has grand ambitions is all it really is. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, again, it's like, I remember this uh, comparison between Ukrainian Revolution of Dignity and those uh, uh, protests in Russia on Bolotna Street when, you know, uh, there's like Ukraine burning uh, police bus, police vehicles on fire because they were shooting protesters. Protesters said, are you fucking kidding us? And they made a lot of Molotov cocktails and threw at uh, police buses and set everything on fire and policemen were like oh fuck and they uh, ordered snipers to shoot at people and people shot back and uh, went with all those wooden shields and uh, like uh, removed the uh, dictator hmm. uh, Navalny in Russia makes selfie in a police car he's like wow I'm arrested check this out <laughs> <laughs> they're hopeless guys they are fucking hopeless sorry for my french no but words. they're hopeless <laughs> so glad you uh, call it french as well yeah i got a couple of super chat shout outs i'll do here so seeb's animal threw five bucks in super chat glory to ukraine from newfoundland thank you thank you very much i like newfoundland myself excellent place um and Benny Verhoeven threw in $20 super chat, just matching CF Beauty with a big thumbs up. Awesome, awesome. We'll get them sent right over. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Um, let me check the others to make sure I'm caught up. I am. A couple more mm -hmm. questions there from Dave, and we're probably about done. Sure thing. We got one here from a new member, Murray. Hello to you. Uh, Operator Starsky, are you going to be voting in the Belgorod People's Republic referendum on Sunday? What on earth is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I will. Uh, I, I will uh, vote in several villages at the same time. Vote early and vote often. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with democracy if you just keep voting. Actually, actually, I can do it remotely from home as well because it's completely normal. Having on the Eurovision people... app, sorry, yeah, yeah uh, uh, having armed people in uh, a foreign territory and having a referenda, like uh, according to Russians, for example, it's absolutely legit. Uh, I laughed today because uh, this. Damn it! I for forgot his name again. This uh, Zatulin. Uh, the Russian member of Duma, he was like, uh, we included Zaporizhia and Kherson oblasts into uh, Russian state, right? <laughs> Even though we still don't have full control over those territories. How, how even do you keep, like, how do you hold a referenda on a territory that you don't have full control over? Shit. It's yeah. the delusion. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I had missed a super chat from level 70. Thank you. I was reminded. Uh fifteen dollars thrown in through super chat. So thanks, level 70. Starsky, any more information on how bad the cracking is on the supports under the Kerch Bridge? It seems the bridge may collapse on its own soon. 
Uh, yes, it's true. From what I know, uh, when Crimea was occupied by Nazi Germans in the World War II, there was a project of building such a bridge, and this project was cancelled because uh, more than 70 years ago, Germans made an assessment, like a research, uh, and they uh, concluded that uh, this bridge cannot exist because it will fall down, it will collapse on its own eventually, because uh, the, uh, the Crimean Peninsula and uh, uh, the tectonic plates on the bottom of the Azov Sea, they're moving continuously, that's why uh, it cannot exist there. Eventually, right. in, in like several years, 10 years, 20 years, it will collapse on its own. Uh, so probably it will happen. I'm not sure that it will happen uh, before Russians uh, use it to GTFO from Crimea to Russia. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will happen after that. We uh, we had uh, Skits Crasher gifted five memberships out to Karen Lada, Caitlin Berg, Marty, Bossy Babushka and Last White Rose. So welcome to the family, everybody. And a big thanks there, Skits Crasher. And then we had a super chat sneak in that tried to get by me, but no, I'm on the job. I got this. Tyler Dowdy threw 10 bucks into the super chat fund. Rolled up socks make excellent cat toys in a pinch to keep Chicken Nugget occupied. <laughs> Good call. The worst thing, the worst thing is that she's uh, going crazy every time I'm around. I mean. Uh, I have um, the home camera installed. That's why I, uh, you know, I can uh, observe my animals when I'm away. And uh, she spends all of her time like sleeping or pooping or sleeping. You know, whenever <laughs> I see her through the camera. As soon as I'm home, she she's doing all kinds of crazy things. She's running around, uh, jumping at uh, Fudge, and uh, Fudge is very uh, respective towards you know. Uh, towards uh, cats uh, he uh, tends to keep his distance and stuff uh, huh. but, but he was happy to see her of course and uh, she jumps at him she steals his food and stuff and uh, it, it makes him a bit upset I, I think <laughs> oh, she's like funny. you know she's like oh my bald mommy is home and I can do all kinds of shit and she does <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> oh man well we're just coming up on the hour and we don't want to keep starsky too long today because things are busy so once again let's quickly shout out janine's travel fund to get to ukraine so she can work with the magic food army volunteering to make real meals for the heroes that are fighting it's a really cool thing. She really wants to get there and help. They really want her help. So, you know, we just, you know, raising a little extra to make sure she can get there and stuff. It's working. So let's keep pushing it. Let's help Janine get there. Uh, link is in the description. And after the show, I'll put the other links in that show you more about what the Magic Food Army is, if you want to look into it and all, just to make sure. But, yes, we definitely have to get that done. And, um... I don't know. Let's see. I think we're just about there. What do you think, Claire? Any last words? Oh, do I just have one last question to leave Starsky on a good note. I need to know the best meal of the week so far, Starsky. Best meal of the week. Uh, I learned it recently. So um, th there there was this uh, uh, friend of mine. She, come, uh, she comes from... Uh, she's Persian, uh, Persian, in a word. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about uh, like different types of food, like what we have in Ukraine, Varenix and stuff. And she's like, uh, when we meet, I will uh, treat you with some awesome Persian uh, cuisine, some some awesome dish. And I'm like, uh, wow, wh what can it be? And she's like, it's a goat's head. Goat's head? <laughs> she made you goat's head? Yeah, she said she will make me a goat's head. How okay, so sleep she with one yet. eye open. You gotta yeah. look forward to that. Like <laughs> like with eyes, with brain and everything, it must be so delicious. Okay, I'm, you are I'm definitely glad. gonna have yeah. to give us an update on that when that happens. Oh, if, I survive, if I survive, if I survive. we need to know about this experience. 
I want to know if I it bites you back. You're pretty tough. Yeah. No goat's going <laughs> to take you out. I can tell you that. They ain't a goat around. It's going to take you out. I know that. But um, I, I would, oh, my. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. It, it, if you can avoid the eyes and the brain, the rest of the meat is absolutely delicious. Yeah, but I, I heard that's why they serve it that way. They're supposed to be the delicacy part, the eyes well, and the brain. Well, yes and no. I mean, when I was in Saudi Arabia, they had one of them, and the <sighs> the the sheikh who was running the thing offered the eyes mm -hmm. to the the guest as you know a a sign of honor. And he said, "I'm sorry, yeah. it just it's it's so against my culture to eat eyeballs. I can't do it." Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and then he sorry, said, "What I'll I do in your future." <laughs> yeah, but what 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 he said was, "I tell you what, if you eat one, I'll eat the other." And the sheikh looked at him and says, "I can't stand the things." <laughs> 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 he gave it to somebody else. Oh, geez. yeah, I I thought they were like, "Why the hell did you eat this useless meat?" There's like those you know tasty eyes, and I like the commentary mm -hmm. from uh, Commander Four Hundred One uh, who said. Be careful uh, that you know this uh, goat uh, didn't sleep with caterpillars. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Yeah, this is true. Is your goat oh, that's funny. today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm eyeing you up, goat. But uh, uh, Commander McMillan, what do you think? Thoughts and wrap ups on the day then? Uh, you know, today was quiet and there wasn't a huge amount to talk about but i suspect in the next couple of weeks Ooh. we're gonna be uh really busy yeah i think you're not wrong there absolutely and uh let's check in with dave then what do you think buddy i think the uh the main thing i, I wanted to do was just to thank everyone who is in the background again that doesn't normally get uh, a shout out from us because we're obviously more important we're on the screen you know we're idiots not, uh, you mean yeah yeah. Oh, uh, yeah that that that's what i meant yeah i mispronounced it so uh yeah thank you janine <laughs> obviously janine's back in the background and uh, cf beauty and all the others that are making this shit run as well as it possibly can um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, and anything else Dick, that you might want to add about donations to boom, boom fund, anything like that? Yeah. What we should do is throw in Janine's thing one more time here. We're, uh, helping her raise funds to get over Absolutely. to Ukraine to volunteer with the magic food army. And, um, uh, one thing when you, when it comes to, uh, supporting your, your favorite creators and stuff, always remember how much money YouTube takes from the super chats and those direct donations do way more for the creators and whatever they're trying to fund. It's just one of those things to keep in mind. Um, as I always do, make sure you urge your local, regional, and federal, state, uh, you know, country governments or whatever to, uh, you know, support and stand with Ukraine as much as they can, you know, Get the red tape out of the way and just get shit done. The more we tell our governments to do it, the more they will, well, maybe listen, but, it, you know, it doesn't hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Write a letter, buy a yeah. stamp. They still make the damn things, it, you know, make a yep. phone call, write emails and all. But, yep. it's it, you know, we got to keep it up. And I think then we just turn over to Operator Starsky for the last words of the day. Yeah, friends, I w uh, I'm very, very happy to see you tonight because we didn't have uh, a stream for quite a while. Uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, thank you in advance for supporting Janine because we're all family here and now mm -hmm. she comes to Ukraine. I'm personally worried, of course. I warned her about all the risks, but, uh, you know, she's a mercenary moderator. She she doesn't care about the risks. Um and uh, thank you so much. You're awesome. And we'll see you later. Awesome. Remember, everybody, two words you got to keep on the tip of your tongue. Slava Ukraini. See you soon, fellow babies.
Go home. Go.